Hello TypeScript fans! Today I want to show you how you can properly type data when you fetch it from a server. And for this purpose I just built a small Express application using Express.js to host a server. And this server here has a REST endpoint called slash users. And on this REST endpoint it will return a JSON. And this JSON contains a property called amount which has a 500. As a, as a value, so we will get back a numeric value 500 to the amount of that user's endpoint. And now I want to fetch that and probably your fetching logic um, would simply look like this, or at least mine would. <laughs> so I go to that URL here, slash users, and I fetch then the response from there. And then I'm using the response.json functionality to get back the JSON from the fetched data. And as you can see here, the return type is promise unknown. So what we will get back here is actually like unknown and we would have to write something uh, ourselves to make sure that um, this um, payload has then the expected properties like for example, amount. Um, I want to show you some of the the pitfalls here because um, what I see uh, or have seen in some um, code samples was that um, yeah the easiest to achieve the, the goal and to access the amount would be to first of all write your own type so I have done that here I will just uh, like minimize this because I don't want to show the uh, next step so usually people then um, create a user's type with an amount and the amount then is of type number. Yeah, this uh, here is actually the type for the response. And then um, what is usually then done is that the um, JSON uh, functionality here is used and then um, a type assertion comes into play that says as users because that uh, will make sure that the users here is being typed and then you can use the amount and you can um, yeah, sum up the amount here with 100 for example. Because if you wouldn't do this, if you wouldn't do this as users, then TypeScript wouldn't allow you to access the amount because users is unknown. So you would have to specifically type um, the type here for users. And um, yeah, this is uh, being um, yeah, fixed or quick fixed with this as users uh, type assertion. But I want to show you like what um, can go wrong with it. So let's run the demo. Um, I will run the server first, npm run start server because I built myself a script to run the server and we see here now the server is live. I will create a new terminal here and I will run the client npm start or run start client. This will then execute this code and we will see, okay, it gets here the user's amount, which is 500 and then it adds 100 and we have 600. That's um, fine because the amount here was indeed 500 and 500 plus 100 um, are 600. That's cool. The problem now is that if the server for whatever reason decides to change the return type, for example, it decides to not return a number anymore but a string, then we will run into some problems as I will show you now. So first of all, I will go back here to my server. I will restart my server so that now it returns the 500 as a string. And then I will run my client code again. And we will get to see the 500, but now returned as a string. And we see then um, yeah, 500,000 and 100 as a result. <laughs> and it's actually also a string because um, here the type will become a string because we will get the string concatenation as amount is um, yeah, a string. And then the plus will be like adding 100 as a string to the existing 500 string. Yeah, and this is why our result here is wrong. But we don't get to see that from our TypeScript code. Yeah, our TypeScript code will simply yeah, signal us everything is cool and it will tell us that here the amount is still a number even though it isn't and uh, it will continue to work. So we will operate in an unknown state which is very, very um, yeah, tricky because uh, all kinds of uh, yeah, unexpected errors can then happen. So what would be a next step is to prevent that and to fail early. Yeah, so to uh, fail early, we can implement some type checking and this can be done using um, a custom type guard. So I 
build this using an, uh, an assertion function. So the assert amount function here is actually an assertion function that uh, is also the reason why it has this asserts keyword. And it will assert that whatever we get in here, which can be unknown, will be of the type users. Yeah, this is what the function is supposed to prove. Implementing this validation check can be quite time consuming uh, because let me show you what I did here. <laughs> like <laughs> in order to prove that um, something unknown is of this user's type, we have to first validate that it is of type object. Yeah, that it is an object. And then we have to check that this object contains an amount. And then we have to check that this amount is also of type number. Yeah, and if um, all of this is the case, when it has an amount, when it is a number, then it is valid. And if it is not valid, we will just throw an error. Yeah, this is uh, how an assertion function is being built. And um, what is cool about this assertion function is that first of all, we can remove this as users because after using this function, users will be of type users. Yeah, TypeScript helps us here. The compiler knows that when this line goes through, then uh, users can only be of type users. Yeah? If I comment that out, then TypeScript wouldn't know that. It couldn't guarantee that because the type is not narrowed down. And then here we would run into problems because um, it's not validated. Yeah? Users will still be unknown. So using this, we can remove our type assertion and we will gain some extras because when we run now our client code, which will get the amount as a string, the client code will actually fail. Yeah, it will throw an error, it will tell us, hey, response doesn't have a valid amount. Yeah, that is quite cool because now it doesn't operate in an invalid state and it doesn't uh, give us uh, results like 500,000 and 100. Yeah, it will fail fast. Problem uh, is still that we have to write all of this, which is quite tedious. And um, to be very correct, yeah, we would have to also implement different kind of error messages. Yeah, we could have different kind of error messages like, hey, the response is not an object or hey, the amount is not present or hey, the amount is not a number, but a string. Yeah, the, uh, we would have, uh, in order to have uh, detailed error information, we would have to have more if uh, cases with different error messages, which is quite yeah, cumbersome to write. Even this year was quite difficult to write because um, let's say you um, want to check if amount is in response, yeah, just, just this. TypeScript wouldn't let you do this just, just as uh, written here because first you have to prove that um, response is not of type unknown. So you then have to check, okay, it is an object, right? And then the amount is in that object. But then TypeScript tells you, well, the response could still be null and then it's not of type object, yeah? So you have to prove that it's not null, which is uh, what I did with um, the is defined here. Yeah? So you have to combine all of this to then make this line work so that you can then use it for your next check. Yeah? It's quite a lot of work to write it for complex objects. You see how big this here is already just for something small. Yeah? Like this, this assert function, assertion function is already bigger than the type. So let's have a look how we can simplify it even further and improve the development experience. To improve our situation and to have validated types from a server that we don't control, we can use an open source library called Zot. And Zot itself is written in TypeScript and it does schema validation. And that's quite easy to use. So let's first check how to install Zot. They have listed also some requirements. First of all, you need to check your TS config JSON and uh, see if the strict mode is enabled. And if so, then you can uh, continue and install Zot, um, for example, using npm install Zot. And afterwards, you can set up your first schema. Schema creation with Zot is very, very easy. So you just import Zot, then you have this namespace Z, and from that Z namespace, you can get different types, for example, a string type, and you can then define that your schema is simply a string that will then allow you to use your schema and to call a pass method. With the pass method, you supply something that you want to have checked and then it will apply the schema and see if the schema is uh, valid according to what you input. And in this case, uh, the string tuna is being checked and it will return a typed tuna string 
and everything will be fine. In the negative example, um, a number is being put in and then that will throw an error. Yeah, just as we had with an assert function, if um, the assertion is not uh, okay, um, the code will crash and uh, fail, fail early. You can also use the save pass method in which you won't get to see an error being thrown around. So that will help to not crash your code, but then you have to um, yeah, check the result yourself. So you need to check then, okay, if the returned object has success set to true or false, and then you can handle the error as you would like. So this was the case of just a simple string. Of course, you can validate objects. That's uh, very useful for JSON responses as we have in our code. So for a JSON response, you can create an object. And that's quite cool because you now can compile new schemas uh, built of other uh, types. So here you see that it's quite pluggable. Yeah, you still have here the string type that you then plug in in an object and then you get an object with the type of username that is supposed to be a string. And that is then your new schema that you can then use to pass any other input. And also very, very cool, if you write a library or if you share your types with other parts in your code, then you usually want uh, your schema also to represent the actual type. Like we had the users type, for example. So you can infer then from your schema the type to then use it in different parts where you just need a type. So let's apply that in our code to have a real world example. Back at our code, we want to replace this type and this assertion function with Zot schema validation. So first of all, we need to install Zot, npm install Zot. And then after we have Zot, we can import it. So I will import the Z namespace from Zot. And then as uh, shown in the readme, we can create a schema. So I will call it users schema, which then is an object. So we use that object. In here, we then put properties that we want to have in this users object. And we had the amount. And we want to have it of type number. So I will use Zot number in here. And then we actually have our schema ready. Yeah. Now with this user schema, we can actually go and replace our assert function with users.pass. And then we put in our users. And then we will get back, if this pass method succeeds, we'll get back um, a typed users object. So we can then assign it to a new constant here, for example, validated users. And then we can use validated users going forward to then call the amount property from it. For our users type that we used here, we can also make use of the user schema now. We can say that uh, type users is actually zot infer, and then we infer the type of the users schema. Yeah, this will then be the equivalent to the type users. So we can have this and that would be useful if, for example, we want to export the type to be used in, in a library or in a different part of our code. Yeah. Cool. Now that we have this, we can run our client again to see if it really does what we expect it to do. It will run and it will throw an error because we still in the server serve a 500 as a string. So we will get to see that from the Zot error message. Yeah, we will get to see that uh, it expected a number, but received a string. And we will also get to see that the issue was in the amount property. So here you see another big advantage. First of all, our validation code is much shorter now because we can remove or we were able to remove the assert function. And second, we will get more explicit um, error messages. Yeah, So we will get to see that, for example, we got uh, a string but expected a number. So the error message is much more detailed as the error message that we had before. What really is cool is the 
composition of uh, ZOT schemas. Yeah, as you've seen, we can compose um, a bigger schema out of a smaller schema types. And um, this will also allow us to do the following. For example, here we take the user schema and we pass it um, with the users. But uh, let's say, or let's imagine that our server would respond with an array of um, amounts. Yeah, let's say amount 500. And here we'll have amount 1000. Then we could uh, simply go in here. And we could also say that um, we have an array of the user schema. And um, that will then return us here like uh, an object array. Yeah, so that will also be very useful if you don't want to repeat yourself. Yeah, if you want to keep your code um, very, very dry, then you can like compose an array of that schema, for example, just uh, by simply doing this. And then um, you would also see here in the TypeScript code that uh, you need to use uh, the index here to access elements in that array to then get your results. I will simply go back to the server and actually turn the strings into numbers so that our code will run fine. And then I will restart the server. So let me simply run start server again. Then uh, the client code here will get the first element and then add 100 to it. So if I then go here and run npm start client, and of course I need to use npm run because it's a custom script, I will get to see that it finally works and we will have now an array of user amounts. Now we've seen how we can save ourselves from writing a lot of code simply by importing Zot and building schemas. But it gets even easier because so far the most complicated was to write the schema ourselves. But we can actually infer it with some tools from the JSON responses that we get from a server. There is a very cool website for that. It's called transform.tools. And in here you can paste a JSON to get your Zot schema. Let's do that for our localhost 3000 slash users endpoint. Yeah, this is the response JSON that we get from that server. And I can simply copy it, paste it in here to then receive on the right side the schema. I can also go to the settings and then name the schema, users schema. And if I confirm that, I can simply go take this piece from here. Then I go back to my VS code. I paste it here. Yeah, I have the user schema. And it's an array now, even this is uh, being done for me. So I don't need to use Z array here anymore. I can just use it from the main schema. And when I run my code, it will also work fine. Yeah. Now I saved myself even from writing the schema just by taking the response from the server, pasting it in transform.tools, copying over my schema from there in my code. And then I just uh, infer the schema, for example, to provide some types, and I'm done. I can use the pass method, have then type checked code in my TypeScript client application and be happy with it. Super cool. I can only say, test it out yourself. Yeah, go to the Zot library, uh, read me, check what it can do for you, and try it in your next code that uses, for example, fetch and dot JSON.